Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sign Mime and Visual Theater. I'm hoping this will be an interesting class. Most of the time I teach this live, face to face, real people. So it will be interesting to see how I can translate this course to being a communication, a mix online with you. Now I will be very, very active on my courses. I'll respond quickly to any emails. I'll also be participating in all of the discussions and watching for your additions with your assignments, video additions, things like that. My name is Dr. Luann Davis Haggerty. You can call me Dr. Luann or Luann. Now, I just wanted to say hello, give you a little bit of background, and explain what I will expect from you during this course. What I hope to give and what I hope you will receive. So, I will be teaching different techniques for using physical expression. So who uses physical expression? Well, everyone, really. Uh, interpreters, definitely. Deaf storytellers, people who like to upload videos on TikTok or YouTube or People who like to perform in any way on stage. Lawyers, teachers, preachers, anyone who has to publicly speak will find different tools that will help you improve those skills during this course. Now you'll notice I am simcoming. I know it's a problem. Uh, both languages do not come out clearly all the time. So please excuse me if my speaking becomes a little unclear and my signing becomes a little unclear every once in a while, switching back and forth. The support will be the captions and all of the material on my courses that's typed. I'm also happy to Skype, to video call, FaceTime, uh, Zoom, if you'd like also. So if anything is not clear, communication is awkward, let me know. And maybe together we can figure out how to fix that. Now, my background, why did they give this to me to teach? Well, I was an actor uh, and still continue to act in New York City. I had a career for over 20 years performing. And I noticed that my ability to get jobs was based on a comment that continued to happen again and again and again. People would tell me, oh, you're so expressive. Well, the reason for that is because my grandmother was deaf and I was raised with my grandmother. So I learned sign pretty much all the way. There is no uh, granddaughter of deaf adults category, no coda equivalency for the godas among us, but my mom and dad were hmm, busy. My dad was sick often, so I was with my grandmother a lot, which meant that my body language, facial expression, gestures, especially on stage, were very clear communicative tools. And that helped me be able to work in theater for a long time. Um, I'm also a registered interpreter, RID, certified, master. Um, there are a lot of funny stories that I will share 
with you as we go along about my decision to become certified and why do that. I have a PhD and my focus was change and leadership using the arts with a focus on deaf theater. So all of those things put together give me some ideas, some good tools to be able to share with you. Uh, I'm also hoping that you will share with me your skills as well, your interests. Why, why did you pick the course and what do you hope to learn or benefit from the course? I'll be curious to know. So the first part of the course, we're going to talk about observational skills. What can you see and how much information can you gather from what you see? Um, most hearing people, they get the information from many places, from hearing sounds around them. So they don't focus as much on the details. Deaf people do tend to notice the details. Um, most of my deaf community, if I asked, do you remember what I was wearing the first time we met? They might actually be able to tell me. Uh, so for the hearing people in this class, I want to encourage you to continue to develop your observational skills. How somebody gestures, what's their facial expression? How do they walk? How do they stand? <laughs> How do they dress? We all have a character. We have a mask. Not a mask, but a mask that we like to show the world. So the way we present ourselves in everyday life is chosen. Uh, some is borrowed from your family, your experiences growing up, all of the people around you that you have not thought about, just unconsciously picked up and put into the way that you express yourself. But there are other things that you do choose. You don't act the same in front of your parents as you act in front of your teachers or the way you act at a club with your best friends. So we all do change and are flexible with the personality that we express. And I want you to start noticing that. Uh, give you some easy first tools. There is uh, a man named Francois Delsart. He noticed and he observed, because he had to, he was an orphan. He grew up in the church and at 18 they kicked him out. He got a job working in Paris, it was French, Paris opera, but he couldn't sing. So he had to be able to express that. What does that look like? He studied the other people on stage and copied them and no one noticed that he wasn't making sound for almost six months. Now, opera back then was different. People were not sitting politely and watching every movement, the uh, the audience members were moving around at the same time as the show. So that might give an excuse, but still, that skill was impressive, and he became famous for his observational skills. Now you see Del Sartre in statues, the poses that you see. Soldiers who are on horses, 
If it has one hoof raised, if it's fully raised, if all four legs are on the ground, it's supposed to symbolize. And Del Sartre could have told you that. So I'll give you a brief five minute explanation of that. And we will be using that a little bit deeper as we go along. Del Sartre felt there were three main kinds of characters. There's an intellectual, which means you stand tall, so your center of gravity is high, like a rope through the top of your head. Your eyebrows and eyes are very important. Your signing should happen high, and all of your sign choices need to be very, very detailed. That's one intellectual character. Next is an emotional character. In that, you're standing comfortably, your center of gravity is here. Everything you choose is soft and smooth. Uh, nothing is hard tends to be slower and more emotional. Maybe it's happy, maybe it's sad, but all of your movement starts here. That's the second category, an emotional character. The third is physical. And your center of gravity is low through the floor heavy hips. Most of your signs would be low and you would tend to pick blades or fists if you could. Now without having to change how I feel, I can decide to give you the impression of a teacher who's very, very intellectual or a teacher who's very, very sensitive, emotional, giving, or a teacher who, okay, we have to work online. Good luck. And inside, I don't have to change the way I feel. I don't need to look back to a time and remember something in order to pull out an emotion. I can give you that character simply from the way I stand, sign, express. Um, so for you, I want you to start noticing how different people stand. Are they standing tall? Are they standing with emotion? Are they standing like with their hips, feet apart? So that's the first observational tool that I would give you. I also want to lead you into your first assignment. Now, I want you to play around with language. People get nervous. I'm going to say the word poetry. Don't freak out. It's okay. <laughs> it's really simply playing with language. If you are playing with English, you might think of words that sound the same, that rhyme, right? So old and behold or coat and goat. You'll be able to see it when I type it up but the words are spelled the same. So even if you can't hear it, you can see a rhyme from how the word is spelled. Kids hearing, kids will play with language. They'll make up crazy sentences using words that sound the same, even if the sentence isn't really uh, beautiful. Well, deaf kids 
they do the same thing. In deaf culture, you use hand shapes to make a rhyme. And what I mean by that is like A, B, C, D, like that, or one, two, three, four, five, like that. Or it could be simply a hand shape. And you figure out how you can communicate with that hand shape, even if it means that you can't change. Some very, very famous deaf poets, for example, Clayton Valley, played around with that very simple format of ASL poetry um, brilliantly. So it can be done in a deep level, but I'm gonna ask for you to just play around. Don't feel pressured, don't get nervous, but I'm gonna ask you to use the hand shapes of the letters in your name. So for example, hand shapes. My name. Then I'm gonna borrow the hand shapes, not the letter. So L doesn't equal L. It could be I want you to play around with that hand shape and what images it can create. Same with you. So you, with your assignment, you're going to use your name. But my example is my name, L. U. A. N, E. So you make a little bit of a story using your name. Most well-known ABC uh, poem is golf. So G is the T, O is the ball, L is the club, F, the ball goes off. So two things that I'll ask for this first week. First is start to develop your observational skills. Second is start to play around with language. Find a way to make it your expression. Especially hearing interpreting students are very, very respectful and they're very concerned they, they don't want to insult anyone, but it limits language. You have to find a way to make it your own, not steal it, not appropriate it, but play around with it the way you can express yourself. And I'm sure that we will continue to do that more and more and more as we go along in the course. Now to end, I'm gonna ask you all to breathe with me three times. The first thing you do in life is breathe. The last thing you do in life is breathe. <laughs> okay, so three times I'm gonna ask you to breathe. And as you, at the same time, I want you to think you're, that you're pulling in positive energy and you're letting go negative thoughts, worries, things like that. Three times, okay? Good job. Breathing reduces stage fright. It also calms you down so you can think more clearly it's a good thing to do before a test, and it's how we will start each class from here on out. Thank you for joining the class. I'm sure 
We'll find a way to enjoy it together and have a good day all day long. Bye.